Thank you for tuning in to CCF Lowell's podcast. Wherever you are, we pray that you would be encouraged by today's message. To learn more about us, please visit www.ccflowell.org. And you can also find us on YouTube and Facebook. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Amen. Uh, the goodness for this Sunday is that it's your last Sunday this year. And we shall meet next year. The next service will be next year. So, um, mine will be very brief and I want to talk about a name that we normally talk about. What comes in your mind when you talk about Embeneza? Okay. Before I forget, let's all stand for the reading of the word. My scripture is coming from First Samuel, and this time I'm going to ask a frontier. Anybody who feels comfortable to read for us the scripture today. First Samuel 7, verse 10 to 14. While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines broke drew near to engage Israel in the battle. But that day the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them unto a, <clears throat> such a panic that they were rooted before the Israelites. 1 Samuel 7.10, New Living. The men of Israel rushed out to Mazapan and pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them along the way to a point below the Beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between the Mazapan and the Sheen. He named it Ebenezer, Ebenezer, saying thus far, the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and they stopped invading Israel's territory. Throughout Samuel's lifetime, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. The towns from Ekron to Gath that were the Philistines and captured from Israel were restored to Israel, and Israel delivered the neighboring t- territory from the hands of the Philistines, and there was a peace between Israel and the Amorites. The, town, the towns from Ekron to Gath that the Philistines had captured from Israel were restored to Israel, and Israel delivered the neighboring territory from the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Anorites. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this word of morning or this afternoon. Um, We pray that God of glory, that you speak to us. May the word of God come real to our hearts. And we do pray trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's have a seat. Uh, today, I want to talk about Ebenezer, and uh, what I had in mind is when I had to speak on the last Sunday of the month, what came in my mind was traditionally, even in the past, I used to have what we call where people come together and take the stock of the year. Then you can know whether you are going at a loss or gain. Everybody does that in the business. But before I come to that, I would like to say that um, this Ebenezer, the word Ebenezer gives people a kind of uh, hope because we know what happened when God uh, came and gave victory to the Israelites. I don't want to take much time of the second slide, like go to the second slide, and the third, the meaning of the word. Ebenezer has the meaning, and the meaning is that um, the stone of help. And we know that uh, it's not a very common name, a couple times mentioned in the Bible, but I'll go quickly uh, to talk about the three things. One, 
I'm going to talk about um, how at the end of the year we take our stock and our inventory and know where we are. Then I talk about when you are in that position, is the time to give thanks to God. And then the last one, I'll just mention about um, what about when we experience those hard questions in life, that things are not the way we expect them in our businesses, in whatever we do. So I'm going to talk about the normal life. Uh, nothing much, but uh, just what we do day to day life. I'll start by saying, my first one is when we walk with God, and uh, I want to apologize here something that I think there'll be a, a mixed up with my, my PowerPoints because after I sent here, I realleged them. Yeah, this, they are the same, but I realleged the way I have. So I'm not following the way I think you have. So bear with me. But if I just say, go to the one that says, one, daily walk with God, take the stock of the business, and that's the one I have now. So we don't use the word stock, but people normally use the word inventory. And what we do at the end of the year, we normally try to take inventory. How do we come to that? Um, I just prayed with this why, how, and uh, why, how, and what is whereby whenever you want to start a business, there is this question of why. Why do you want to do what you want to do? Could be a business. I want to start a church. I want to start a business. I want to do this in life. There is this what you are looking for, and this is have to be future. You are looking something. That time you don't know where you're going to end. It's a future of what you're going to do. And that future becomes your vision. When you, look, when you have your vision for what you're about to do, then we will develop more in the business world. We go to the, the vision statement. Every business has to have that future uh, vision statement. And then for us to go to that future that we are talking about, there has to be today. And today there is the question, how? How do I go? How do I take myself to that future? And how to go about is how do I take, and that is mission. How do I have the mission statement for me to be able to achieve the vision statement? And then when you have a good vision and you have a good mission, then you shall have the product. And the product is the final end, whereby you know this is what I have at the end of the year. Are you in red if it is in the business or are you in black? Meaning that either you have a profit or you had a loss. And then that is the time you can be able to, be able to know what you want to say. And that is why Many people today, they are in some kind of a challenge because, and I call it a challenge, because maybe you started something that you did not achieve where you wanted. And in that product now, it is not where you wanted to be. You maybe want, you had a vision to go to school, but you tried, but you did not end up going there. So you did not have that. You did not achieve your product. You did not achieve your end where you wanted. So the product must not only be the business world. It could be an achievement in life. It could be that profit that you make. It could be something that you have brought your kids and you have brought them to the level that you want. It's that final stage that you have achieved. And that is why we can come at the end of the year and we can say, we can give thanks. And that's why the Bible says, we give thanks in everything. We have to give thanks in every situation. We don't give thanks for, but we thank God in, in every situation that we are, because as far as we know, 
this walk with why, how, and what has to be with God. Without God, the results cannot be the way you expect. But with God, it makes the difference. And therefore, because we know at the end we can be able to give thanks, just like go to the next one, whereby we can be able to give thanks. The Bible says in First Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for there is, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And you can have that, doesn't matter what, as far as you are in Christ Jesus, that means you are not alone. There has to be somebody accompanying you. And this is where I'd like to say, when you start with God, the end result, there is rejoicing. God gives you the final result for a reason. And you'll be able to have a reason to rejoice in it. And therefore, for example, if you go to Psalms 137, this verse 4 is where the children of Israel were taken in captivity. And during that time, they heard that Jerusalem has only been destroyed. And then they were mocked by the people there. Why don't you sing the song that you are singing in Jerusalem? It's like a Christian being mocked by a non-Christian. Then here they were saying, how can we sing a song in a fallen country? How can we rejoice, in other words? How can we give thanks? to our God when we are in a foreign country. But I thank God because the psalmist had known that there'll be a time you can be in that situation whereby you can say, how can I rejoice? How can I give thanks when I am not in a position to give thanks? But psalmist is said in Psalms, Psalmist 136, it says, it's the whole chapter of saying, thank God for he is good. That means there's people that have been told, we think to thank God because he is good. Whatever happened, he is good. And therefore, even when we find ourselves in other situations, we still can be able to say, our God remains God. Our God remains good. It doesn't matter. It is not about our, your uh, situations. It's about who he is. He never changes. He is the same yesterday. Today and forever, he is the same. And therefore, when we know those kind of things, we can be able to remain firm and give thanks to God all the time. Here comes, uh, there is a question I raised from the first one. Whenever we think about Ebenezer, there is a question that says, and where is the glory? In your business, where is the glory? In everything that we do, where is the glory? And the glory is the presence of God. I'll give an example of the children of Israel. This was the time that the children of Israel had a battle in a city called Ebenezer. I know we talk about Ebenezer in a high moon, in a good way. But I would like to say, Ebenezer sometimes it can be a city of cry. It can be a city of death. It can be a city of sorrow. It can be a city of loss. Let me give you back to the history. The, 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 if you go to Psalm, uh, First Samuel chapter 4, there was a time the children of Israel decided to fight the Philistines. And when they decided to fight, they went to the city called Ebenezer. When they went there, the Philistine, Ebenezer, was at the end of their Lord. On the other side, they were, the neighbors were from the... the uh, uh, a city called um, Philitia. Uh, Philitia. And Philippians, who are living in Philippia, 
heard that the children of Israel were gathering at Ebenezer. They came at their town called Ephek. A-P-H-E-K. Ephek. The other side. They were between two, two, two mouths. When they start fighting, you know the children of Israel, they knew how to fight. What was the tradition to these people? They were winning the battles. Are we, to, are we together? Yeah. They were winning whenever they were fighting the neighbors. So they knew that always God was with, with them. But this time, they have started worshiping other idols. They were not well equipped. They were not fully committed by serving God. So when they went to that fight, the Bible tells me that they fought and the Israelites were defeated. 400,000 uh, 4, soldiers were killed. And in that battle, they thought, we are defeated because we did not come with the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of the presence of God. And in that Ark, we had the two tablets, uh, stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. They were inside there. And therefore, they said, let us send people at Chilo. Chilo was where the Ark of the Covenant was. And that's where the high priest, Eli, was. They said, let's go and get the Ark of the Covenant, and then we shall fight these people, and we shall win. They got the Ark of the Covenant brought at Ebenezer. We are still in the city of Ebenezer. When they fought the second battle, they were defeated badly. And the Philistines were able to take the Ark of the Covenant and took it to their, to their, to their Lord. Actually, they took it to their capital, Ashidod. And when they took it to their capital city in the, in the temple, where their, Dagon, Dagon, their, their, their God was, they were put together. And let me go back slightly what happened in the people who were defeated Israelites. The reason why I say Ebenezer is the city of pride, that time it is when it happened that when Eli heard about the, the, that the Ark of the Covenant has been captured, what he did, he sat, he was sitting on a chair, he fell backward and he broke his hand and died. And then, it's because he had his two sons were in the battle. And during that battle, both of the sons were killed. Not only that, when Eli died, the wife of one of his sons was pregnant. And she had the Ark of the Covenant had been captured by heathen. Her father-in-law has been is dead. Her husband is dead. She got a labor pain. And she gave a boy. As much as the women around her were encouraging her that she had a boy, a baby boy, each dog. She named the boy Ishidod, I-H-S-H-D-O-D. The meaning of that is, the glory has departed. And she asked the question, where is the glory? Because they knew that the Ark of the Covenant, representing the presence of God, was covering them. And now the cover, that the glory that was covering them to achieve the victory has already departed. And not only departed, has been captured, has been taken in exile. 
It could be like somebody commented, scholars said, that could be a time maybe if Israel could have been taken in exile. But instead, God, their presence or the Ark of the Covenant is the one that went to exile. And they were left naked like the way Adam was found himself naked without clothes when sin came in. And because of that, they felt that they had no glory. And therefore, they came, as the song was saying, they became a long slave of fear. They started fight, hiding from, where, from here and there. And now, it became unusual. Anytime the Philistines will come, they will push the Israelites further interior. They became hopeless. They became no strength. And that's why when they were in that situation, let me tell you something going on. God was fighting with them. God was, was, not, God was fighting for them. When, God went, when the Ark of the Covenant was taken to the city of Palestine, it did not give them peace. The first night when the Ark of the Covenant was taken in the temple, the Bible says that that night when they came in the morning, they found their God prostrated on the ground has fallen, and they took him up, put him back again, position. The second day, not only lying prostrate, his head was cut off. His two hearts were broken until they realized this is not the way. They found God is fighting them. And not only that, Plague start coming to the, in the town. Whenever town they have put the Ark of the Covenant, there were a lot of tumors. People are dying because of tumor. People are dying because of hemolytes. I think, for example, it's like you go to a, uh, to a doctor because you have your breeding of hemolytes, and you see this register, um, the nurse at the desk, instead of finishing registering you, she say, I have to go to bathroom because I'm bleeding, because of hemor hemorrhoids. And then you go and see the doctor. You are sick, doctor is sick, everybody is sick, everyone is sick of that. Not only that, the whole country. If you look at like now you open here, you look at the parking lot, what do you see? You see rats jumping and dancing on the praying ground, because there are so many all over. Even the ground, there are too many, they are even jumping on your car. That's the tendency of if everything is bad. Then they said, oh please, can you really move him, this Ark of the Covenant, to another city? They moved them to almost three times. They went together. And when they went there, the same thing. They went to their place, the same thing. Ekron, the same thing. And then at that time, they say, no, we cannot allow this. We are going to ask the five big cities that we have. We have five rulers. We are going to agree. They were advised by their diviners and their priests that whatever you need to do, get gifts. And five gifts, golden, they, they make those uh, 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 rats, golden rats, uh, expensive things. And ask the people. They, they put the cows uh, and this, uh, 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 you know, the cart, and they say, "Can we take this ark of the covenant? Express, don't stop until it goes to the land of Israel." That is how it came back. It, it came back, and when it came back, uh, something was going on. Samuel, try to be a very fast. Samuel was pleading with people, please, when are we going to come back to God? When are we going to come back to God? And then people saw their sins, and they repented their sins, and they came to their senses, and they agreed to 
serve their God. They did away with their idols. And God had them. Now, when Samuel was kind of having a sacrifice near the city of Mizpah, then the Philistine heard that there is a gathering. Whenever there was a gathering for Israel, the Philistines will come to attack them. It was the normal of their day, day in, day out. They were coming to attack them. It was a normal thing, but this was not the same because the Ark of the Covenant has come back. The glory of God has come back to the Lord. The people has come back to God. And the God has given them the, the cover. They are no, no, no more naked. But the Philistines did not know. So when the Philistines tried to come, and I want to give you a clear picture. The Beniza, the city that they were defeated, it was far north of the town, or of the, uh, the area of the, of the city of Israel. But Ebenezer is all the way down interior. That means they were even coming to attack them inside their, their city or their, their territory, even before that way. But now, literally did they not know that their God can come back to them. When they came, what was the condition? Can you imagine the condition of the soldiers? They were horrified. They had no... Uh, they, they, were, they, they, they had that kind of a feeling of defeat. They have been beaten so many times. Many have been killed. The morale was down. Yes. But let me tell you, my God is good. Yes. When they approached them, when they approached Mizpah, there was this big thunder from heaven. The thunder came, and all the soldiers of Palestine. They were confused. And when you look at the person who is confused, cannot tell you where he's going, cannot know what to do, cannot even know who is beating him. He was confused that as if somebody is dreaming. They could not be able to know what to fight. They could fight themselves. But let me tell you, the same thunder that was given by God to the Philistines, they felt confusion. But to the Israelites, they had confidence. Yes. They had confidence. So when God speaks, you are enemy, you have a different message, and you get a different message. Because our God wants to rescue us. Yes. And that's how the Israelites, they did not do much. They were just going to slaughter them. They were following them, cutting their hands. And the work was already done. They did not fight them. God fought them. And that's what God does with us. When the enemy attacks us, there is somebody who fights for us. And his name is God. The God of heaven. He fights for us when we are facing the battle. The battle does not belong to us. The battle belongs to him. And we should be encouraged. And I thank God for the new. And then... Samuel said, I'm going to get a stone. We are going to put a stone of remembrance. A stone is going to be laid between Mizpah and Chen. And when we put that stone, the stone will be called Ebenezer. And the meaning is, this far, God has helped us. This far, God has helped us. The new Ebenezer, God has come to change the name. Yes, the first Ebenezer was the city of defeat, was the de city of death, was the city was everything was a loss. But God came and changed the name and said, I cannot remain defeated if I allow people to keep on remembering Ebenezer. They will keep on saying, that is where the Ark of the Covenant was captured. Yeah. That is where the God went, yeah. as if he was defeated. God never been defeated. Yeah. God was going for a mission to fight their gods. Yeah. 
and bring them uh, and win them. But God had to change the name of Ebenezer. The Ebenezer that he brought, it did not come to the city of Ebenezer, it came in the near Mizpah. And Mizpah, the meaning of Mizpah, it is the tower, the, 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 the watchtower. You know, like where the, we read the, the, the book of one, uh, Psalms 127, isn't it? Where even the city, the watchman who watched the city without God is in vain. And therefore, he is watching. And I thank God, because that Ebenezer did not mean for only that Israel. It meant even today. It was a symbol that our Jesus Christ is washing at us. We are washing. The glory is on us. So we cannot be able to cry anymore by asking where is the glory. The glory is still, the glory has already come. And therefore, when they were put between uh, Mizpah and Shem, Shem means sharpened rock of victory. It's like a sharpened rock. He is the rock. He gives victory. He's the one who brings victory. So that's where I want to, when we look about, when we talk about today, and that's what I want us to, to look for a few minutes, that when you talk about this rock, it's unless Ebenezer, God brought victory to his people, and in our battle, our Lord will do the same. Even our battle will do the same. What he did that day, the battle is. What are the Ebenezer movements? The Ebenezer movements, take, for example, that time. What do you think the Israel felt when that victory happened, when God fought for them? That is what happens to each and every one of us. When things are not the way we expect, there are times we see something and we say, Deventry, there was a hand of God there. Deventry, that was not me. There was a hand of God there. We need to be sensitive and to walk with God and say, it doesn't matter. It's not always to look at the glass and see the empty glass. It's good to look at the glass and see it's half full. There is God's work in our doing. In the year of 2023, every defeat of the old Ebenezer will be forgotten because when we go to 2024, we are coming with this Ebenezer, the stone, is, uh, 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 the stone of help, the new Ebenezer. That's what we are going with. The Ebenezer we are going with in 2022. My prayer is, may God see you through in every time that you have fell down, may let it be strengthened by his, because what he does, he comes from the same position. Let me tell you, you might have lost whatever you have lost in 2023 or the lives before, but God is coming, and that's why he came without Ebenezer again. He knew where he, the loss came, and he came with the same name. When you look at the Andam, for you to get my message here, Andam, when he was created by God, he sinned, and he fell short of glory. God did not change. He just brought a second Adam to replace. So when you talk about the second Adam, who is the savior, he has covered. He comes to cover. So your first Ebenezer will be covered by the new Ebenezer. Your failure will be covered by your victory. When God gives you victory, you will not remember the cry and the many solos, the losses that you had in the past but you shall walk with the victory because God has come. And the reason why uh, the Bible says that Sam did not say God has been helping. He said he has helped us this far. There is a point. It's not a full stop. It's a comma. Yeah. Are we together? Yes. This far, it's not a full stop. It's a comma. Yes. Meaning it is this far now, but still there is a future. Oh, yeah. So... Your past history, Deventry, is a pledge 
of the help of tomorrow. What you have, the battle you have gone, or the things he has helped you in the past, is a natural lens that he is going to help you even in the future. That's why he said, only this far. And you know what? It shows me that they are trying to forget, they are trying to remove the old Ebenezer from their equation. Because when they say, God has helped us this far, they are saying from the beginning God was helping them. They don't want to see where the, where the Lord came. It is a straight line. Are we together? God has been faithful. For us, we don't see that time of Ebenezer town where we fought the battle. We lost 4,000 4, people, soldiers. Where we lost people, died. And the glory was not there. We are saying, God has been faithful this far. Yeah. And this far could be this far with the time. Whatever time you have lived, maybe you have gone right and left, whatever time you have lived, this far God has been your Ebenezer. Yeah. To others may say, geography wise, how many countries have you come from? How many cities have you moved? From how many houses have you moved? Do they all have good history? Some of the houses I have left have no good history. Places you have left, but the bottom line is, all that lined up together, today we are saying, this far, God has been faithful. God has helped us. It's good to know that we shall remain for. So when we go to 2024, let's go focused with a new Ebenezer, with a sable, a stone that says the stone of help. You are not alone. You are with God. My challenge is go with God. I'll leave by saying, do you know the qualification of a president in the United States? There are three things that you need to have. These are, for you to be a president, two of them, you might not have a lot of say, but you have one say. I'm going to mention one. One, you have to be born in the city, in the, in the country of US. That one, you have no choice. You just found yourself in this country. You just found yourself. You cannot say which home to be born. We just found yourself. The second one is you have to be that five years old. The years you have no control. The years will catch up with you. Whether you like it, whether you remember the year of birth, the years are catching up with you. The fourth one is that you have to live in this country for 14 years. It's your choice. You can decide, you can be born in this country and you go to live in Africa. You can be born in this country and you go and live elsewhere. If you don't live here for 14 days, you cannot qualify to be a president. 14 years. 14 years. If you cannot live for 14 years here, you cannot be qualified to be a president. And here I'm saying, when we face 2022, the, you have been a chosen nation. Uh, you, yeah, 2024. Why did I say that? Okay. Thank you. When you go to 2024, uh, God has chosen you as a chosen people as a chosen generation. Yes. So he has already chosen you. Yes. And also, you have, to, <clears throat> you have to be a human being because you talk about people. Those two are things that are obvious. But there is a choice. You have to decide to remain in his relationship. You have to make a con that choice. It is you to make a choice because not everyone has chosen to be with Christ forever. Has he been your personal savior? Have you allowed him to be your personal savior? Have you allowed to give him the leadership of your life? Have you allowed him to take control of your life? That choice is yours, and you have to make a choice. So there is one commitment that God is looking for you to succeed in 2024. Let's all stand. <clears throat> I would like us to pray for... <clears throat> I, not necessarily business, 
but there is something that you have been looking for and you think that you have gone through the first Ebenezer and you want to change that situation, maybe it's look of job, maybe it's a business, whatever you have, is there anyone who lays up your hand, you want us to pray and we invite the new spirit of the new Ebenezer, stone of help, God of help, and this far God has helped us. Is there anyone in our midst? I want us to pray those things. Yeah, thank you for those raising hands. Thank you for those. We are going to pray that God will do something, will change. Could it be your, any factor that you have, job, whatever we have. Let's, let's trust God in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are here, Jehovah God, to claim and to say the glory of God is with us. God is with us. We are putting an, on a, a stone of remembrance today as we come to the end of the year 2023. We are saying, God, what we have gone through, it will never be the same again. We are inviting you and we are saying, God, come and change the name. We have cried for whatever situation. Change that to a victory, oh dear Father. Maybe there is something we have been looking for. Maybe there is something I have been seeking for a long time and I have not received. I know, Jehovah God, you have come to provide for me because you are a provider. You are going to protect us. There is that need that I have, but I pray, Lord Jehovah God, you are the stone of help. Come and help me, oh dear Father. I pray for those people who have raised their hands. I know that God, you know their needs. And in the name of Jesus, I pray and I decree that their needs are met, their needs are changed, their lives are changed in the name of Jesus. And today, Lord, we are going with a testimony that God, you live us, so oh God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let's lay the grace together. Hallelujah. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy. Happy New Year. Thanks again for tuning in. We pray the Lord has used this message to speak to you today. If you'd like to stay connected, please subscribe to our weekly podcasts. We pray God's blessing over you wherever you are and wherever you go.